Some of my favorite Halloween DIYs with a little bit of a twist. A Jamie the Crafty DIY guy, welcome back to my channel. For this first video, we are going to take these plastic spiders. You can get them at Dollar Tree in the Dollar 25 section. Some of these puck lights, and then I have these vinyl siding hooks. You can buy these on Amazon. I think I have these in my storefront below. Grab some of these Dollar Tree puck lights. A lot of people don't realize they do have a little bit of a hanger hook on the back of them. And then there's also an adhesive back. So you do have options. I took mine and just put them directly onto the siding. They're going to come off real easy. I've used these in the past. Hook your spider through your vinyl siding hook and look how cute this is for your front porch. I am so excited about this. I was obsessed with this. Now, you may have noticed those pumpkin pillows I had outside. Well, those are actually Dollar Tree chair covers. And what's so great about these chair covers is that they are sealed on three sides. So you've only got to stuff one side of these pillows. Everybody is going to be doing this. I literally just filled mine with an old pillow with stuffing that I already had. They are a generous size. Glue it along the bottom. How cute is this? Now these are plastic. So I'm not keeping these inside. I just wanted you to kind of see how they would look on the couch and the size of them. But look at them on my front porch. I love these so, so much. All right, in my next DIY, we're gonna take some of these uh, salad tongs and uh, we're gonna we're gonna break the bones. We're also gonna have some of those wood blocks that you see to the left there. Um, the, I'm using my little tool here. I always forget the name of this tool. Let me know in the comments. I'm gonna take my blocks outside, spray paint them black. Now we're going to add some glue onto the bottom of our kind of uh, salad tongs here because they um, end up really, really cute as home decor. You could use this for anything. I thought it would even be fun to put some family photos in there or possibly some jewelry. Lots of very cute options. I saw these trays and I loved them. Unfortunately, there was only one that was in black and my friend that was shopping with me wanted it. So I told her not to worry. I would take it. I would spray paint it black. Do you not love the way I placed the sunglasses, by the way? Great for coffee table. Great for accessories. So many fun ways you can use this. And it looks really kind of fun and just kind of chic. I'm telling you, more and more easy DIYs. These spider bowls, I've been looking for them forever. This two-pack of bowls that you can get in the kitchen section of Dollar Tree. I'm telling you, so cute. Take them outside, spray paint them all black, fill them with Halloween candy, fill them with knickknacks. The great thing about it is you can easily change this out and put whatever you want in here. Candles, like more candy, food, snacks, all kinds of very, very cute, cute options. Now for this next DIY, you've seen these all over the place. They are so easy. Grab a couple of floral picks that look like these witches hats from Dollar Tree. Grab two vases that are the same size. You want kind of the shorter, little stoutier ones if you can. And then grab a couple mop heads. Take your mop heads though, flip them upside down. I've seen people are doing them a couple different ways. Basically, the side that you would screw in the mop, I guess, uh, pulled mop handle, that's where you want to be facing down. Kind of smooth out your hairline of your ghost here. And then remember, you've got this inside too, so we are going to definitely be using that. We're going to add some hot glue. Put the majority of it on the mop head there. That way, your witch's hat is going to stick down. You're going to repeat that with number two and you can kind of see off to the right side there I've kind of made some eyeballs that we're going to also ask or um, add to our ghost we're not going to ask our ghost if he wants eyes we're going to go ahead and give him some eyes so this is what they look like then I added the eyes and then I've got those lights that are LED lights from Timu we're going to add those look how bright. I absolutely love these and think they are so, so cute. 
Now I saw this decorative accent and thought it needed to be black. I just wanted it to be completely black, so I took it outside and I spray painted it. I also added a hole in the top just with a simple pair of scissors, and now I am melting down a candle so I can turn this into a spooky candle holder. Now with this one, you'll obviously want to watch this. I put it outside, but yeah, as you can see, as the wax is dripping down, it is dripping down along his head. So, so fun. Love the way this one turned out. Now, speaking of outside, grab one of these purpley or pumpkin-y kind of, I don't know why I said purple, pumpkin-y glass vases. Grab a solar light. And if you can find one of these hanging kind of mason jar hooks, these are ideal. They will fit perfectly right on top of this. So no worries there. You can keep that copper lid for something else. Um, you're going to take your solar light and you are literally just going to kind of uh, shorten it a little. And they make it really, really easy to do. Now, this top part was not supposed to come off. So uh, go ahead and put that back back on there you're going to take off the bottom part and just put it down inside of your light and when you are done you can then paint on a little face if you wanted to if you had a cricket you could do a vinyl little jack-o-lantern face totally up to you um my jack-o-lantern looks a little uh hungover we'll say maybe a little tired and uh it wasn't exactly perfect but Look how perfect outside it is. I really like this one. Now, there is a fancy store called Grandin Road, and they had some kind of a mantle decor. And these signs reminded me of those when I saw them at my Dollar Tree store. So I wanted to kind of have that same kind of look with mine. And I took them out and I spray painted them. I spray painted them this vintage bronze color and you can use them in a lot of different ways. Really, really happy with these and the way that they turned out. Now, this next DIY is going to incorporate this little uh, bumblebee bird cage that I picked up during the summertime. And uh, I guess it's still technically summertime. And these little skull solar lights are so adorable. There's a switch on the back, so they turn on and off pretty easily, which is kind of fun. And then I have these glittery, sparkly spiders. Now, the first thing we need to do is remove our bumblebees from here. And these actually come off really easy. Just kind of twist them back and forth. And if you're doing this the right way and just kind of, you know, taking your time with it, you are going to have some bumblebees that you can use for another time. Now for the cage itself, it does open up. There's a little hook on the side there. So our skull light actually fits perfectly down inside of this, which is fun. So it kind of looks like your skull is in jail. Now, whenever I'm working with these uh, kind of uh, Dollar Tree items that have these clips on them, I just kind of rip up the back and then I can clip the spiders directly on to the cage. I thought about painting them, but I kind of like the idea with the light shining through with the lights of the skeleton and then kind of bouncing off the orange and with the black being the cage, I think it would look really, really cute. And so I just kind of added the spiders where I thought they would fit best. Now, I hung this outside and uh, look how kind of creepy it is when he's staring you down. I thought that that was super, super fun. Now, this next DIY, we're going to take this gather together mat and we are going to actually flip it over on the other side because I wanted to use this lighter side. I thought it would be easier to paint. Now, the first thing that we're going to do with this is we are going to paint this in orange color because we want our pumpkin to pop through and we want the orange of the pumpkin to show through on a black background. So, my stem is just a wee bit too long, and uh, I am going to kind of cut this down. I just took a straight edge 
uh, cutting mat and then my box cutter opener thing. And uh, we are just going to use that and just kind of go right across the top. It ends up becoming the perfect size. So lots and lots of orange spray paint. Went outside, totally covered this with my orange spray paint. I think I did three coats and then I'm going to bring my pumpkin into play. And for the pumpkin, we are going to center that up. We're going to make sure that he has a good uh, kind of a good uh, stable system there and then I started spray painting around and when it was done I have the cutest custom floor mat or doormat that I have probably ever had <laughs> Now for this next DIY, I had this a Dollar Tree kind of haunted house shape. I also had this great wreath that I picked up at a yard sale and I wanted to kind of change the color on them a little bit. And I took them outside and we are going to spray paint them black. Now the other thing that I did do was add just a little bit of highlighting in there so you can kind of see in the center there, I did spray paint with some antique bronze just to give it a little bit of pop and a little bit of color. Now, I lost the footage, unfortunately, here where I added kind of the Dollar Tree florals and some of the garlands and things, but when it's all done, this is super, super cute, and I love the way that this looked. I'm so sorry I lost that footage, but I had to share this with you because I loved the way it turned out. Now for this next project, we are recycling some DIYs. Now you may remember these that I did for some fall DIYs. And uh, we are going to turn these into some scary kind of Halloween canister sets. Now, if you didn't see this video, definitely check it out in my fall DIY video, and I will link it below for you. Use your hot gun and just kind of reactivate your hot glue. This is why I use hot glue for a lot of things, because you can kind of recycle these. Put some force down there, and you will be able to pop those off. Now, they are green. I took them out, and I spray painted them black, and we're just going to kind of repeat the process that we did before. We're going to add some more hot glue to the bottom. We are going to glue our vase canisters that I was able to make using one of the other Dollar Tree canisters and those kind of classic Dollar Tree vases that you see. And uh, as you can see, I filled them up with some skulls and some eyeballs. Super, super creepy, fun DIY decor, and fun to have around the house. Now for this next DIY, we are going to take this bathroom uh, kind of uh, accessory. Careful, those lids will fly off there. And uh, we're going to paint the lid. Now for the paint that I'm using, this is just Waverly's ink chalk paint. Um, you will have to do a couple coats on this. Sometimes plastic doesn't really adhere a lot to the, the chalk paint. I do find that if you use a little bit of sandpaper that that does help. But it only took a couple coats and I was able to kind of use that center stem there to kind of hold this for the most part because you're not painting the underside of this. You're only going to be painting the top side of this. And then uh, use up your heat gun if you want to to kind of help speed that around. I also did obviously go back and paint the stem where my finger was holding it still because I wanted to uh, make sure, of course, that this was cute and that everything Everybody liked it when it was done. Now, this part you might not like, but my favorite candy of all times for Halloween is candy corn. And I wanted to have a little cute candy corn holder on my coffee table, so I filled it with my favorite candy candy corn and now I have a really cute coffee table candy jar filled with my favorite treat. Now this next DIY is a fail. Do not do this. I grabbed this bucket. I thought it would be a really cute candle for outside. Um, I did not check the bucket to see if it was watertight. It is not. Um, even adding glue to the bottom of it, it is not. Do not do this because you will find out that soon it will explode all over your kitchen. I had black wax all over my kitchen. I had to let it dry. I had to use a scraper tool. Sorry, Cricut, but your tool actually worked out really good. So that's what it looked like when I first grabbed the... Um, 
the first batch. Then I remembered that I had some of this pink stuff. This is not sponsored, by the way, but if pink stuff, if you want to send me some pink stuff, I will gladly take it. I used their kind of cream and just kind of scrubbed it in. Then I used a damp cloth and kind of went into some of the nooks and the crannies. And uh, you can see here, it's definitely getting better. I used it again right in front of the stove because that's where a lot of it went as well, including under the stove, and uh, just kind of repeated that same process back and forth. But now my kitchen looks great. It looks as if nothing happened, and uh, this is a DIY fail that I wanted to share. The creepy little light that we can make with some Dollar Tree finds is going to be this little lantern here. I'm going to take these, uh, they're not really skeleton hands, I'm going to call them zombie hands. And we're going to create just kind of a spooky looking lantern. Now, I did use just a little bit of chalk paint here in this bright red. We're going to we're going to call it blood red. And uh, we're going to take the fingers of those little hand pieces and uh, dip the fingers in there and then we're going to kind of make it look like, you know, there there's some blood and they're trying to crawl up and maybe grab the lantern out of your hand here. And uh, we're going to take these hand pieces and we're just going to glue them onto the sides and kind of match them up with those finger that we're creating. Now, I'm going to do this all around the lantern here, and some of them you can even take and you can cut them down, and uh, obviously be careful with that, and then once again, just kind of painting those tips, and then uh, adding some black ink chalk paint to the hands, and uh, just kind of aging them a little bit more, and uh, you've got kind of a creepy looking little lantern here. I think this is so cute for how Halloween. Now this next one is kind of a creepy DIY as well. We're going to use some of that leftover chalk paint that I had, that leftover blood, if you will. And we're going to take these clear chopping mats. Now I need a inspiration, so I'm going to use my hand. We're going to take this chalk paint and yes, I am painting my hand because I am covering my hand in blood. And uh, we are using a combination of uh, that brush that had the black ink chalk paint on it as well as this red, which is why you kind of see some of the black in there and some of the darker pieces. And uh, you're going to want to go ahead and coat a pretty thick amount. Now we're going to just take our handprint and uh, we're going to take our hand rather and we're going to create a handprint on that chopping mat. Now I did wash my hands and then I did it with my other hand as you can see here and it creates two little blood splattered handprints on those clear chopping mats and then after it dries you're going to cut those out and uh, you are going to have a very creepy DIY that I will show you a little bit. Bats. I found more of the wood bats. If you saw my last haul, you know that I wanted to find some of these locally. I grabbed these when I was in Denver and I was able to find four more. So I took them outside very, very simple. Spray painted them with some black matte Rust-Oleum spray paint. Look at my fireplace. I'm sorry, I just snorted too. I don't know if you heard that. I love the way this turned out. Those bloody handprints look so cool on the fireplace. And I love the way the bats are coming up out of the fireplace. You may have noticed my little ghost friends that were in the fireplace there. These are from Dollar Tree. I just simply bought five of them and I added them inside of my fireplace. And when it's all said and done, you've got the cutest little fireplace. All right, everyone. And for this first project, I'm going to be using one package of these jack-o'-lantern glitter thingies from Dollar Tree. And then also I'm going to use one package or at least half of a package of one of these. I also have this great twine. It's a blue and white twine. I didn't want to use regular Dollar Tree twine because it frays so bad. And I'm going to be threading my pumpkins with a embroidery needle. So I needed something that was just going to be a little easier to work with. So that's why I'm using this blue twine instead. So the first thing I'm going to do is take one of my needles out. I'm going to find the longest one that I can get because I am going to be threading through with those pumpkins. And, um, what I'm going to basically want to do is 
make sure that, uh, you know, the, the thread and everything that I'm using obviously is going to be nice and sturdy. And uh, that's why I like working with this blue and white striped twine. Uh, I take a little bit of hot glue and I just put it at the end of my twine. I let it kind of cool off just a wee little bit. And I take my fingers and just real quickly go through there and just kind of tighten that up. And that almost creates a wire type effect. And it makes it really, really easy for threading a needle and for threading your beads and everything. So I went ahead and doubled my string. And now I'm going to take my jack-o'-lanterns off of the stick. Now you're going to save that stick because you can see here, the needle is not going to go all the way through. But if you use that stick and push it all the way through, you will be able to now thread your pumpkins through. So um, once again, just kind of keep pulling it through and then all of a sudden you've got your jack-o'-lantern on the twine, on the string. Now I'm gonna go in and I am going to add some black beads just to kind of mix it up a little bit. I decided here at the last minute that uh, I was going to do that. So now I remembered and I went ahead and grabbed three of the beads. I'm putting those on that thread as well. Then I'm going to take the smaller jack-o'-lantern that I originally was going to use. And um, rather than going sideways on this, I decided to just go directly down the middle because I thought that that would kind of be a cool contrast. And then I'm just kind of tightening it up and uh, keeping that thread nice and tight as I work my way through. Now I'm going to go ahead and add three more beads. Then I'm going to add a larger pumpkin again, kind of using that same technique. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually this time use the stick first. I'm going to take the stick. I'm going to poke a hole through it with the, um, the stick that it was kind of skewered on. And then once I do that, I am then going to go back through with my needle. And I'm going to start the needle through there. And then I'm going to use the stick. And that one created a nice big old hole there. But not to worry. It's going to cover up. So now I'm just pushing that needle through. And then threading it through once again. Adding a couple more beads again. Making sure that that string is nice and tight. When you double over the string like that. You're going to want to make sure that each time your string is coming out. Nice and smooth and nice and flat. You may have to adjust it just a little bit. So three more beads, and then you're just going to kind of keep repeating this process until you have the desired length of your garland. Now, for this particular garland, I am not going to use this for my fireplace. This is just going to be a garland that I'm going to use on a tiered tray. So it's not going to be quite as long as a garland that you might have for a fireplace, for example. But the beauty of this is you could obviously make this as long as you wanted, and uh, I will show you soon what I end up doing with this garland. Now, my next project, I'm going to be using actually some of these leftover pumpkins. And I have this adorable blue pickup truck that a friend of mine, a subscriber of mine, picked up for me at a thrift store. She saw this and she thought that I would absolutely love it. And she was so right. Because I have used this little guy on my tear tray so many different times and I love to be able to decorate it up for the holidays. Now I have these little tiny bales of hay and I have three of them that are left over from another project. Um, one of them uh, or two of them I should say are already kind of glued together so I'm going to just kind of work with that and I'm just kind of playing around with the placement of the hay because I'm, I'm kind of envisioning this you know this navy blue pickup truck which of course navy is my favorite color. And uh, now I'm just kind of working it around and trying to figure out the best way to glue these pumpkins to the haystacks. Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to glue the hay or the pumpkins to the truck itself. Because I like to use different things for the truck. I want to be able to you know, decorate the truck up for Christmas and for, uh, probably not for Halloween because that's kind of what I'm doing now. Halloween, fall, this is definitely transitional enough. So now that I've got the hay kind of finally figured out, I'm going to add some hot glue to the top and I'm going to take one of my glittery pumpkins and just glue it right on top of that haystack. And then for these, I'm just going to adjust them just a little bit again. And then once again, just kind of figure out the best placement for the pumpkin. Again, I'm not gluing anything to the truck itself. I'm 
gluing only using the pumpkins or the haystacks themselves. So I had to uh, refill my, my glue gun there. <laughs> and now that I've got some more glue on there, I can glue the second pumpkin in place. And then I'm just gonna keep stacking these until I've got the design that I like. And this is so, so cute. And it's going to be the perfect addition to my tiered tray, which I will show you in a little while. Right, in this next project, these are the coolest little bags. These are treat bags that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. It's a four pack. And the great, great thing about this is that the fabric is burlap. And uh, I loved this green twine that I picked up on Amazon. And I had this leftover pillow that with all this great stuffing. So I am going to make some little pumpkin pillows and uh, we're going to do two different projects with these. So the first thing you're going to do, of course, is take all of your fabric out of there. You're going to put the twine upside uh, along to the side. I am going to use the twine as well as the green there. And um, you'll see why in a little while. But um, just put that aside. Make sure it's nice and close by. And then... Um, these little pumpkins are so, so great. I love this. The fabric is nice and soft. If you can find these, I highly, highly recommend that you get these because they are such a great, great quality. And uh, I really think that there's a lot of fun things you can do. So I'm just going to take some of my pillow stuffing here and uh, I'm just going to stuff my pumpkin bag with it. And uh, when I'm doing this now, I'm also making sure that I'm getting down in those corners of that bag because I do want my little pumpkin sacks here to be nice and full and fluffy. And again, just kind of, you know, working in all the little nooks and crannies and all the corners and uh, stuffing a, a surprisingly a lot of stuffing in each one of these. And, uh, you know, I had to kind of keep peeling it out in pieces there. But as I'm doing this, it's really starting to take shape. And I really loved the way that this was starting to look. After that was done, then I took my green twine and I just tied it in a simple bow. I'm adding a de decent amount of hot glue here at the top. And I am just going to glue it right at the top of my pumpkin stems there. I did also take my scissors and kind of uh, fan those out or, you know, uh, cut them to kind of make them more strip-like. And I think that they are so adorable as is, but you can also do something a little bit different with them. So now I'm going to take two of my Dollar Tree wood pallets. And uh, what I'm going to do is just add a generous, generous amount of hot glue there to each one of the planks. And then I'm going to glue them together like this. And this will actually hold really, really quickly, which is really nice. After that's done, then I'm going to take some antiquing wax and I'm just taking a very little bit. And I'm just kind of going over the, um, the decking or the pallets with these because we're going to make a little stand for our pumpkin family or at least for some of the family members. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, again cover this. I'm not too worried about the color and making it super even. This is more honestly about just having a kind of a rustic palette for these to rest on. And uh, this is something that's actually going to go on my mantle because I, in this video today, we're going to be not only doing some tiered tray items, but also some items for the mantle. So I'm gonna clean up my little work surface here, make sure that my palette is good to go. And now all I'm going to do is take my three pumpkins and uh, I'm just going to start placing them on the palette themselves. Now to do that, I'm just kind of eyeballing it here, just kind of trying to figure out, you know, what I think is the best option for these guys. And uh, once I kind of have an idea here of what they're going to do or what, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to add some hot glue right in the center there. I'm going to do it on these first two pallets in the center. And then I'm going to grab one of my little pumpkin guys. I'm going to squish it down into that hot glue, just making sure that we've got nice and solid and good and firm uh, contact there. That way it will stand up on its own, kind of like you see here. And then we're going to take pumpkin number two, kind of repeat the same thing. I'm going to add some more hot glue, 
we're going to uh, fill up the hot glue gun because it uh, ran out of hot glue on me there. So I, I have the smallest little sticks. I need to get the big giant sticks that Shorebonder sells. But uh, anyway, I've, I've got lots of the small sticks though. So now that I've got the second pumpkin glued into place there and he's just kind of chilling and hanging out and standing up. Now I'm going to take the third pumpkin and also add some hot glue once again. I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the two pieces of the palette and then just kind of again, squish it down and set him up uh, to stand up with the rest of the family. Now, that fourth pumpkin that's off to the side there, I'm going to be using that on my tiered tray later on in the video. And then I'm going to give it, I think, to Mr. Otis as a toy. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, I think it would be fine for him. He doesn't really chew up toys or anything, but uh, it's definitely going to be cute on the tiered tray as well. All right. The next project, this is going to go on the mantle. I'm going to be making a garland. And uh, what I love about this is it's actually really, really easy. This was like a $3 project. I took a strand of these wooden beads that I picked up from Dollar Tree and then two packages of these boo wood um, pieces. They're not really ornaments because there's no holes or anything in them. But um, we are going to figure out a way to stick them to our garland. So for the orange paint. Um, I use spray paint. I love spray paint. If you're not a spray paint fan, you want to use chalk paint, by all means, feel free. Go for it. I did spray paint both sides of this. And then for these three, I'm going to spray paint these with my matte black spray paint. And uh, for this, I am just simply taking my Rust-Oleum spray paint again, doing a nice little covering, and we did do the front and the back. I don't know why I keep saying we, maybe it's me and Otis, but I painted the front and the back of each one of these. <laughs> Now that everything is dry, I'm going to go inside and we're going to take our wooden beads. Now, I did kind of pre-measure this and I figured out that if I count every fourth bead and start the boos at the fourth bead, I can get all of the boos on the beads. And uh, this sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? And, uh, the way I'm going to do that is by using some extra twine. So, here you can see me just kind of laying it out, and yes, the boo is upside down, but uh, that's okay. That's okay, boo. And uh, what I'm doing is just really, again, just trying to figure out that spacing. But as I said, I did kind of figure out that it's about every fourth or fifth bead. And uh, whenever I'm doing something like this, I'll always start at the far end of the strand, and then I go to the opposite end of the strand, and then work my way back in the middle. And I do that because I want to, of course, be able to make sure that I have everything evenly spaced out. This garland that is sold at Dollar Tree is four feet, and it's certainly a great piece of garland. Um, it's not quite big enough to go across the entire fireplace. If I were to do this again, I would probably buy, um, you know, two more um, sets of the booze and two more or at least one more set of the garland. But I still like the way it worked out. My mantle is still a work in progress, but uh, you'll see it's still really, really cute. All right, so now that I've got everything figured out and placed, it is time to attach the bows to the garland. Now to do that, all I'm going to do is take my twine. I'm just taking some little pieces of twine and I'm speeding this up here in warp speed. I'm taking a piece of twine, I'm wrapping it around the beaded garland there, and then I'm adding some hot glue. I'm sticking it down on top and then I will flip it over and uh, do it the correct way on the other side, or the easier way, I should say. Um, here you will see what I'm talking about. So you could literally just go straddle across it like this, go right down, and instead of doing it facing you, just put it face down, add your glue, and then take your 
uh, string or your twine and a pair of scissors or if you have the finger protectors, which I have a ton of, but I never seem to have them when I'm doing anything. Now you can see how easy this is to attach. These actually work really, really well. And uh, they, they kind of flow and they kind of sway back and forth with the um you know with the with the garland itself so it makes it actually really really easy to do so once again i just took a small piece of twine that i cut i measured it out as far as the fourth or fifth bead down and then again just taking my scissor there helping me so i don't burn my fingers and holding that uh, twine back into place until it it's glued down and then where the exclamation point there is on the boo once again, just taking some twine and boom, you've got garland that is complete that you can hang on the fireplace mantle. Now, I will be showing you everything I'm doing for the mantle once everything is all done, but we've got more projects to make. I'm definitely into like beaded tassels and garlands and such, and this is just going to be a very easy tassel kind of a thing. Now, for mine, I'm going to use it on the mantle but it's I don't think it's going to stay that way I ended up not really knowing exactly what to do with it now the uh wreath ring that I'm using there that is truly just to hold the beads in place so they don't roll all around my table I didn't have a little plastic dish or anything like that close by and uh this was within arm's length and I grabbed it and that's what I'm doing and then I also have some of these black and white beads that were left over I'm just going to use some of the black beads and then the twine once again now these cute little pumpkins um these are those Dollar Tree wood stickers I've used these in a couple different projects already and um I'm going to go ahead and just remove the sticker that's on the back of each one of these and we're going to get those out of the way and then for the um because i'm using two of them i kind of wanted it to be you know a little beefier feeling if that makes sense at the end of it now your pumpkins that uh you're going to be using here if you choose to use two of them like i did you're going to want them to face the same direction after you remove those ridiculous glue dots. Sometimes those things will not come apart for anything. All right. Now, you can't, you've, you see here what I mean, how they have to kind of connect together. And you can either have the orange glittery stem part going forward, or you could reverse it and make it be the other color. Now, because my beads are kind of a plain orange and the glittery orange, I didn't want those to compete with each other. So I'm actually going to glue my plain wood uh, pumpkin on top of the glitter pumpkin. But before I do that, I am going to sandwich my twine between the two. That way, this is kind of the anchor of my tassel. So hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that that's probably going to be too thick because I want these to be really, really smooth together. So I'm going to go ahead and just add some hot glue here, but I have some regular Dollar Tree twine that's really close by. So I'm instead going to use that. And then once again, just kind of gluing that twine down like you see me doing here. And then I'm going to take my kind of um, unfinished pumpkin piece after I add a decent amount of hot glue. And uh, I am going to glue that right down on top of this. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because I'm actually going to be painting that pumpkin. I didn't want to have one side that was going to be glitter and then one side that was just going to be a plain orange. I wanted to be able to, you know, really make this um, something that was going to be kind of cohesive because, as you know, with a tassel, sometimes they're, they're you know, laying different ways and they, they don't always... Uh, match up. So now I'm going to pick out the bead colors that I want and these random colored full beads um, that I picked up from Dollar Tree, there's not a uh, consistent sizing among them. You can get like two of one color and then you might get three or four of another color and then you might get only three large ones or two small ones and it's, it's kind of aggravating. But uh, I'm just going to kind of lay them out in a design or in a pattern that I kind of think is cute and will work well. And then uh, I do have the black beads, so I'm just going to kind of work those in as well. And then I'm literally just going to start at the very beginning of kind of what I laid out. And I'm just going to start threading them with my um, 
my twine here. Now I did use that hot glue technique at the end of the twine just to make sure that that was nice and easy to be able to thread through. And uh, again, I'm just going through and just threading out everything. Once that is done, then I'm going to make a very simple tassel for the end of this and uh, we are done. It is that easy. And then I will show you what I'm going to be doing with this very, very shortly, but we do have a couple more DIYs to do. Now this DIY is all about the fireplace. So you know that I have a fireplace that is more decorative right now versus functional. My fireplace needs a new damper. A damper is extremely expensive because my fireplace is over 100 years old. The good news is that my fireplace is extremely sturdy. Now I found that great set of Halloween lights at Dollar Tree. And uh, because I do have an outlet that's very close to the fireplace and I have this great vintage suitcase, um, I stack that in there because I like the height that it gives. My fireplace is a little taller versus kind of uh, even out. And uh, I wanted something that gave it some height. So that's kind of why the vintage suitcase is in there. I have my fireplace great because I do have plans to get the fireplace fixed at some point. Um, I was hoping to get it done this winter, but that's probably not gonna happen. And now I'm just gonna take some logs and some lights, and I am just going to start wrapping those lights around with that kind of orange glow and the yellow. It looks like a roaring fire in the fireplace. I love this so, so much. And now it is time to show you what we are going to do with the fireplace mantle and then also with the tiered tray. So on my mantle, I have some great things that I really, really like, like this vase that I picked up at Goodwill for $6.99. I am going to cover it though. I'm going to cover it with this fabric. I don't want to ruin the vase, of course, because I love it so much. And uh, I am just going to take a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of hot glue and just glue up the shorter sides of this. I didn't quite cut my fabric piece long enough. And now I'm going to kind of pull my Buffalo check fabric in there. And as I'm doing that, I'm also kind of wrapping those shorter ends in with the longer pieces, if that makes sense, just to kind of keep everything wrapped up together and to make sure that we've got a kind of full cohesive look here. And then again, just kind of pulling tight as I'm tucking down through and just making sure that everything is nice and smooth. And I will go through and just kind of play around with it a little bit. This is what it looks like when it's all wrapped. And then I did just go back and add in my olive stem branches. I love these branches. They're green. They're kind of neutral. They kind of look like random little crazy sticks. There's my weird looking glasses in the end of the uh, thing. And then uh, I took these cute, adorable ghosts and replaced them with um, my the candlesticks that were up there. I had the battery operated candlesticks and I thought that these little ghosts would look so cute on either candlestick. And then I took some of the Dollar Tree garland. I took some of the Dollar Tree lights and just kind of began to just kind of create my little Halloween environment here. I used the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil skeletons. I used my adorable little pumpkin family that I made. I used that beaded tassel that you see now wrapped around the vase. And I'm so happy with the way this turned out. I think it's so cute. I've never date, I've never decorated my mantle for Halloween before. And I think that this is so much fun. I really love the way that this just turned out. And look how it looks. I pulled the curtains. Obviously, you can still see some daylight coming in back there. But I love the way that this turned out. I think it's super, super cute. I love the boot garland. Now for that tiered tray. This is kind of what the tray is looking like right now. I've still got a couple things I want to do to it. This is kind of near my cricket station. And um, I just kind of always decorate this tray up with kind of whatever the season is. And um, the bottom layer, layer is pretty basic. I've got that sparkle jack-o'-lantern garland that I created. I've got some velvet pumpkins in there just for some filler right now because I need to do some more DIYs for the lower space. The middle space I'm obsessed with. I use the pumpkin, one of the pumpkins from the family. 
I've got my blue truck with the pumpkins and the hay. I've got a little plant that I picked up from Five Below, or maybe it was Pop Shelf. And then on the top, it still needs some work. I've got that beaded corn that I picked up from Dollar Tree. And then one of my projects from my last video. I'll do a few other little things up there too. But that is my decor for Halloween so far.